Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Mike B and today I'm gonna to be answering a question that I had promised several people several years ago that I would eventually do a video on. Well, if you're still subscribed to my channel and you're still watching my videos, I'm finally gonna do this. Uh, you probably already know the answer by now, but this will help out a lot of new collectors that are younger and probably a little bit less experienced with the finer details and they're kind of wondering about some nomenclature uh, like I did. Um, so we're going to be talking about counterboring today and what that is, why they did it, and if it really is a big deal or not. Um, so basically, <clears throat> I'm going to try to do a little bit of shitty camera work here. So I've got the number one Mark III um, SMLE right here. I'm just going to show you at the end in the muzzle right here. I'm going to get the little pointer out. You can clearly see like that's a that's a groove right there. If you don't know what lands and grooves are, um, maybe you should probably Google that. Uh, you should know if you're if you're collecting and getting into guns, you should know what lands and grooves are. The rifling, right? You can see at the end of this this bore right here, you can clearly see two grooves right there, right? And they're actually pretty healthy. And another video that I'll make eventually, but uh, I'm making this one first, is the bullet test. So we've got a 311 cal uh, 311 diameter bullet here, and you can see that it doesn't fit in there all the way. It doesn't swallow the whole bullet, right? So that's actually a pretty good muzzle, right? Um, what happens over time is the, when the gas escapes the end of the muzzle and sometimes from using steel cleaning rods and stuff, uh, the crown, which this is called, will actually become damaged and the rifling will become smooth, which then, or it'll become uneven, so when the bullet exits the bore, the gas is distributed unevenly around the bullet, causing it to um, not fly or not twist correctly, and it'll fly in a random direction. You call this a shot out bore. If you've been collecting surplus for longer than, you know, two months, you've probably experienced one or had a friend experience one where it's shot out. You cannot hit a target at 25 yards, uh, four by eight sheet of plywood. You couldn't hit the barn if you were standing in it, basically. And what that looks like on this Mosin Nagat 9130 is a smooth bore rifle, basically. And it's, oh, this one, this one's been sitting for a while, so it's got a little bit of patina on the inside. But you notice how there are no lands and grooves that are visible at the end right here, okay? And when we do our bullet test, which is kind of a gauge of how shot out or worn the bore is, you can see that it swallows the entire bullet up to the neck. Now, on a normally shot out bore, it's not going to swallow the bullet that much. It'll probably go to like maybe the neck right there, but it'll be a little bit loose. It might not get the case in there. So if you do this bullet test at a gun store or a gun show or something and you see this happening, chances are it might be counterboard, which this one is. So what counterboring is, is basically taking, I don't know, however long of a distance it is, to go in there with a reamer that's a little bit bigger than the bore diameter, as you can see, it's a lot bigger than the bore diameter, reaming out the bore until you get down to good rifling. And this one's this one's counterboard down to about there, so you've got about three and a half to four inches, so I can't really show you an example on that. And it's just to basically, it's to basically give the barrel a brand new life. Sorry about the focus, guys. This, uh, this thing doesn't autofocus very well. It's just, whatever, it's gotta be manual, so I'm, I apologize for that. Um, so, why they do that is, like I said, it's because it basically creates a brand new barrel without having to replace it. It saves a lot of material and a lot of time and effort in manufacturing to basically have a brand new barrel. Because down here, I looked a long time ago when it was still, you know, just a fresh refurb. And it it's like down to here, but you can see, which I'm going to show you next, where the new rifling begins. So the last basically three and a half inches of that Mosin Nagant don't have any rifling in them. They're just smooth bore. But this thing is a fantastic shooter. It's very accurate. It's extremely accurate. So I'm sure that this thing was probably fired quite a bit. Uh, maybe it, it fell or something. Maybe it sat in an arms rack. But usually the rifles that are counterboard are going to have been fired quite a bit and cleaned with a steel cleaning rod, which is what's on the bottom right there, for extended periods of time, making the, the rifling at the end um, smooth or kind of uneven and whatever, like I explained. And then you get this as a result. So what counterboring actually looks like, what to look for um, in so far as the difference between just a shot out bore that hasn't been counterboard and a counterbore is, this is a Moss 36. These are actually designed like this, right? You see that little ring right there? Where it's a, this is called a recessed crown. This isn't counterboring, but it's the same exact idea. And they did this to kind of mitigate a lot of like if you drop it and you damage the crown, um, it's not going to really damage the crown because there's no rifling at the very end. And you know you give up like a half a centimeter 
of rifle, which, you know, barrel, which really isn't going to do much to affect accuracy, but you actually protect that. And see the lands and grooves starting down there? Now on this 9130, of course, you see that ring, but it's way back here. Some of them are, are near the end, like this Moss 36. Some of them are right here. But you should be able to shine a flashlight down the bore and see if it's got a ring. If it doesn't, um, there are some gunsmiths that know how to do this safely and correctly. So Google that. I've never had to do it myself because it's already either been done or I just got rid of the rifle with the shot out bore. I've seen this on um, VZ-24s. I've seen this on Mausers of all types, basically. And a lot of those have got 9130s. Now, the French figured out that that was a good idea to have the recessed crown. The Swiss, also, on the K31... Um, it's it's not really worth showing because it doesn't have anything to do with counterborn, but they also kind of beveled the, the crown as well to protect it. The crown is a very important part of the rifle because, again, like I said, it affects accuracy greatly um, if you have a damaged crown. Um, I personally had a K, or I have a K98 that when I bought it, it was extremely accurate, and I must have put the magical you know millionth or ten thousandth round through it, and it is now no longer accurate because the, the crown is very, very worn. So that's kind of just an example that I have as a collector's item. Which sucks. Now, this brings me to the next point of, you might see when collectors go, oh, is it counterboard when they're trying to buy something? Now, to some people, that might affect um, the value for them negatively. Personally, I don't really care. I think that if, if you've got a counterboard rifle that was probably done after the time of, a time of war, which means this thing hasn't been fired much and it's got basically a brand new barrel on it and you have a really long life left. So to me personally, I actually think of it as an advantage on an old rifle. Some people will disagree with that, and that's per that's totally fine. It's personal preference. Um, I would not hesitate. I have not hesitated at all to buy something that's counterboard because, um, again, I, I used to have a couple of Mos and Nagants when they were still cheap, and I used them to trade for stuff that were counterboard, and they were more accurate than a lot of the ones that weren't because it's it's a brand new rifle, and th then you don't have to worry about damaging the crown because it's recessed. So all in all, I think it's actually a good thing. But again, it's your it's your preference. It's your it's going to be your rifle or whatever you're buying. Um, pistols can also be counterboard. I had a Mauser C96 that probably should have been counterboard, but definitely wasn't. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's what counterboarding is. It's not really a complicated topic. It's pretty simple, and it's something fun to look for. And I guarantee, I encourage you if you if you're hesitant about this because you hear all these old collectors that you know are frickety fucky about little details like that saying, oh, no, I wouldn't buy that, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. I encourage you to touch it with a 10-foot pole, go out and shoot and see just how accurate it is. So, anyway, that's all I've got, really. It's a pretty pretty easy topic to discuss, but uh, again, sorry for those people that were asking me a couple years ago. I just remembered this today, or yesterday, rather, as I was looking at one of the rifles, and I'm like, oh, man, that's really counterboard. Oh, wait, I was going to make a video on that. So, all right, I'll quit ranting. Thank you for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, if that even works anymore. And um, also, if you know, I appreciate you watching, uh, people that are sub currently subscribed and have been watching my stuff. Sorry, I haven't been making more content lately. i got other irons in the fire, some really cool stuff coming up. Um, yeah, so anyway, if you want to consider supporting the channel, please click on the link to my Patreon in the description. It's a dollar a month. And five bucks a month or more gets you into my Discord server. It helps fund really cool things. This top um, SMLE number one Mark III was actually provided by Patreon support. Um, we took a vote, and people wanted me to get one of these to make a bunch of videos on, which I'll be doing shortly. Go out and shoot it and have some fun with it and show you what it's like. Um, so that was actually a Patreon kind of perk that happened. So thank you so much for my current patrons. If you want to support the channel, that's fine. If you don't or you can't, I totally get it. Your support, you're supporting the channel just by watching it. So I really do appreciate everyone who's watching this. So let me know what you think. If you've got any questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm not a totally, you know, expert on the, or I'm not a total expert on this subject, but this is what I know and this is what I've experienced and it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, let me know if I missed anything. I don't think I did, but yeah. Anyway, stay tuned for more videos on, like this. I'll be making some educational videos on guns and surplus collecting and helmets and stuff like that in the future. All right, I'll stop ranting now. I, I always say that and I never do. All right, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you on the next vid.